Today I'm going to talk about for loops and iterating. This is related to part one, chapter two, a nickel tour of for loops. So here I have my default app. And for an example, I'm going to create a simple for loop. I'm going to say for int i equals zero. I'm going to go up to i4. What this means is that inside these brackets, we're going to create an integer called i starting from zero. And whatever is inside the brackets, we're going to repeat it n times. So for example, I'm going to say c out. I'm going to repeat this line. I'm going to put a symbol here. I'm going to go to character map on your windows. I'm going to pick consolas. I'm going to go down all the way down to a box here. Select and copy. I can now press control V, put a symbol in there. I'm going to run this F5. Okay, here you see the result. Let me take out the end of the line. Press F5 again. Okay. What this means is that you're going to repeat this line. And every time you repeat this line, you're going to add one to the i. And as long as i is below five, you're going to keep repeating. So starting from zero all the way to four, you're repeating this five times. If I go from something like two to seven, you're going to have the same results. Okay, five squares. Let's also try debugging this. I'm going to put this back to zero and five. I'm going to put a breakpoint here, run the debugger. Here I have my watch window. I'm going to type in I. And now every time I press continue, which means go to the next breakpoint, you see I continue to get higher until we get to four. And starting from five, we don't meet the condition anymore. That's when we stop repeating. So now I can do something like, I'm going to say I have an HP, which is five. And I'm going to put HP here to represent some sort of a health bar. So I'm going to say C out your health bar. And then if I run the code, okay, this could be something that represents your health or HP. Let me add a little line here. Okay. Let's do another example. Let's say you have an int of all axes in a scene, five of them. And I'm going to say each of these integers represents some sort of an ax item that you can pick up in a scene. You have five in total. If you want to print them out, you could do something like this. C out ax and we go to the array starting from index number zero. Could go down all the way to five, four, zero, one, two, three, four, five different X items. If I run this, so these are five different X numbers on your scene. Another way to write this. I can create a for loop, again, int i starting from zero. We go up to five, i plus plus. And then instead of putting an actual integer inside these brackets, I'm just going to say i. Let me also add a little line here. And then if I run the code, okay, we get the same results. Now the book uses something called size t instead of int. This is just something that allows you to iterate through the biggest container possible. But most of the time in game dev, int is good enough. If you remember video number one, int is pretty big itself. So most of the time you don't really have to worry about this. Int will do for a typical indie game. And starting from C++ 17, you can get the size of the array. So I can say size all axes and then run the code. OK, 
Okay, we get the same result. So this is just the basic stuff. You can do a lot more with a for loop. And let me give you your homework assignment. See if you can replicate this multiplication table using a bunch of for loops. Here I have my example already. I'm not going to show you my code. I want you to figure it out. And if I run the code, I just want to show you the result. Okay, we go from ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, sevens, eights, nines, and tens. Just like what we have here. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.